Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, the place where we discuss all things animals and pop culture. I am your host, Shelby, aptly named Shelby on Safari, and I'm a wild animal biologist who also happens to be a Pokemon trainer. Since the days of red and blue, I was totally a red player back in the day, Charizard all the way. But forget Charizard, today is about another Pokemon that happens to be a flying type. Uh, well, Charizard, yeah, uh, that's a whole other story. Ah, hello, host. <laughs> that's right, I go by host these days. Uh, it is all about Swablu, the adorable little friend uh, that is going to be in Community Day. Now, it, it gets a bit tricky, friends, because in Pokemon Go, we already have access to a shiny Swablu, but it is nice that they will be having their own official day. And so in today's live stream, we are going to go through what you need to know about Swablu Community Day, including some of my top tips for making the most out of the day, as well as discuss Swablu and its real life animal counterpart, in my opinion, because that is what we do here on Shelby on Safari. I love comparing animals that I think are real life Pokemon to their Pokemon counterpart, and we discuss, we uh, have a laugh, but then we also, yeah, learn about animals, which is really cool. So I'm glad you are here. We're gonna get right into it because there is a lot to discuss, and I am so excited for you guys because at the end, I've managed to find out some crazy things in true Shelby on Safari fashion that combine animals, pop culture, history, and it all in one beautiful conspiracy theory. At least that's what it feels like because I got to find lots of little connecting threads between what I'm going to just share with you about the real life animal counterpart of Swablu and some crazy stuff. So be sure to stick around to the end. But first, we are gonna go through what you need to expect with Swablu Community Day. And as in true Shelby on Safari fashion, Maui is now scratching at the door. Maui, you know we do this all the time, Maui without fail. I wish I was kidding. Come on then. I know you don't like closed doors, but we have to have the door closed because it gets loud. All right, Maui, say hi to all the friends. Go on, say hi. I think he was looking right at the camera, were you? So yes, Maui likes to be our mascot. In fact, mascot Maui. Rumor has it, friends, for the one year anniversary of Shelby on Safari, we are gonna be looking into getting Maui merchandise. Yes, because <laughs> any bit of merchandise or stickers for Shelby on Safari, I'm gonna try to close it, has to revolve around Maui because the world revolves around Maui, don't you know? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, hello, Tiffany. Hello. <laughs> what candle am I burning tonight? It's my classic uh, tropical fruits one. It's my favorite Yankee candle, I have to say. no. Guava. Guava is a really good one as well. I burned that one through quite quickly and it is now in my room actually as a host of a plant, which is very exciting. We reuse the Yankee Candles, which again are not a sponsor, but Yankee Candle, if you're watching, uh, <laughs> we reuse them for plant pots. I do have, um, actually, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a little Oddish here as a little spider plant. Very exciting. And then Bulbasaur is down below, but he's really sad at the moment because someone knocked him over. And so Bulbasaur needs a new plant, which, yeah. <laughs> but they're really cute. They're 3D printer little plant pots, which are really fun. So thanks guys for joining. So Swablu Community Day, my friends, it is Saturday, May 15th, which is this Saturday, really exciting. Hopefully we'll have some good weather here in the UK because it's been rather rubbish, wouldn't you say, Emma and Alice? It certainly hasn't been uh, what I would describe as May weather. <laughs> Tiffany, you're over in Greece. Can you send us some heat, please? I believe it's been rather toasty for you. We'd greatly appreciate it. First of all, Blue Community Day, which is going to be on from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time. So once again, friends, we get six hours of playtime, which will be exciting because I'm actually at work that day. So I, yeah, will be playing for one hour at lunch trying to get a shiny swab blue. But as I mentioned before, Swablu is already released in shiny form in the game, and I actually already have a shiny Altaria, which is the vol form of Swablu. Now, during this beautiful six-hour event, more spawns, of course, of shiny Swablus and Swablus abound, lots of little floating cotton ball Pokemon, which is exciting. Actually, friends, 
You want to see a Swablu? Here we go. For my friends who do not maybe know what Swablu is, I'll pull up this cute little bird Pokemon. Uh, so you also get a one-fourth hatch distance. So if you can make the most of that, hatch some eggs, including the new strange 12K eggs, because Pancham is in them, which is exciting because it's a cute, tough little uh, <laughs> fun Pokemon. That's, of course, based off a panda, which uh, for my friends know how much I love pandas. So yeah, exciting to get a Pancham. Then, of course, three-hour incense. So the typical things that one can expect during a community day. Uh, of course, the exclusive move, move will be Moonblast if you evolve Swablu during the event or up to 7 p.m. local time, so up to two hours after. So it's important to get this exclusive move. So evolve a very good high star Four star, much wow, uh, Pokemon. Although there's no four star, it's well, yeah, there is four star. It's like, yeah, the mul multiple, the highest star that you can get. Uh, now, special research story is available. This one, I don't know if I'm going to buy it again. I know some of you do buy it, and that's cool. It's one pound or one dollar, whatever your local kind of currency is. But because I'm at work, I'm probably not going to buy it because I'm not going to have much time to play. Although one could argue. I could buy the research ticket and make the most of the hour lunch break I do have. So that is to be determined. Um, <laughs> yes, Emma, the weather is shocking. Indeed, it certainly is. Now, photo bombs, of course, you can always take a picture of Swablu and get a photo bomb opportunity of uh, your choice with a cameo appearance. I know during the Pokemon Go Snap event, I got a shiny Sneasel, which was exciting. Not Sneasel. Um, this is awkward. The swirly whirly one, yeah, it's gonna, it's not gonna come to me. It'll come to me later on in the live stream when it's not appropriate. Uh, but speaking of Pokemon Snap, <laughs> trying to casually make that transition, uh, I did a, ca a wonderful collaboration with my friend Ken, who couldn't be bothered to show up in tonight's live stream. And <laughs> it was a fun collaboration getting to dive into that world. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, check out that video. It will be in the playlist that I'll put down below. Um, but yeah, during that Pokemon Snap event, they uh, had quite a few photo bombs because, of course, that's one of the tasks. That's where I was going. It's one of the tasks to get, you know, photo bombed uh, uh, encounters. So be sure to get that because I think actually that's how my husband has got a few shinies in Community Day has been from that photo bomb. But I don't particularly remember. Uh, serves me right, though. Shows how many shinies I've been getting. Now, the most exciting thing, I think, of Swablu Community Day, seeing as I already am lucky and have a shiny Swablu, uh, and now it's an Altaria, is Mega Altaria will be released in Mega Raids at 5 p.m. So Community Day, lots of playing for six hours, Jiminy Crickets, then boom, Mega Altaria will be coming out, which is so exciting. I love when the new Mega Pokemon get released. I will be definitely trying to save up my remote raid passes because where I'm at now, I'm out in the boonies. There's not a lot of gyms near me. So I need to be invited to a lot of raids. So that's going to be exciting to try to get Mega Altaria. Now, what I would suggest, friends, uh, my two top tips for Community Day that I'm going to be putting into practice are first, Mega Evolve a Pidgeot, uh, or, uh, well, I prefer Pidgeot just because it looks really cool and I'm still rocking with it to make it my bestest buddy and get that ribbon. That is, of course, so you can get the extra candy when catching Swablu because you need a lot of candies to evolve them into Altaria, which leads me to my second top tip is, of course, use Pineapp Berries. That way you can get the most out of this event and be able to evolve quite a few Swablus into Altaria. So those are my two top tips for Pokemon Go's Community Day happening this Saturday, May 15th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Your local time. Yeah, lots of candies. It's really interesting, Alice, because candies in Pokemon Go are how you evolve Pokemon. Obviously, it's different in the original games, like Red and Blue and now Sword and Shield, where you level them up and train them up that way, or use a rare candy to boost up their levels. But in Pokemon Go, it is now called Candies, uh, which is rather interesting. So that is a ever brief whirlwind tour of Swablu Community Day. It is now time to get to the heart of what we do here at Shelby on Safari is Pokemon animal comparisons. Well, I say just Pokemon, but we do a variety of others from Doctor Who, Animal Crossing, 
And a lot more coming up because I have a lot of plans, including Avatar, The Last Airbender, which is a fantastic series. And I highly recommend if you haven't watched it already. I love that. And in fact, one of my friends and I might be having a wonderful geeky discussion about it in a future, future frame. So keep your eyes peeled. So friends, Swablu, this Pokemon that you see ever so casually on your screen, isn't it adorable? I think it's so cute. It looks so fluffy. Reminds me of Kiana, actually, with how fluffy its wings are. Um, <laughs> except Kiana looks a lot more grumpier. It, actually, if you follow me on Instagram, it has been, I feel like, a Kiana week. A few days ago, I posted some rather stunning photos of my girl. Obviously, I'm biased, and I think she's beautiful beyond all reason but she really was posing for the camera the other day. So if you haven't already, obviously subscribe to the channel, but follow me on Instagram. I tend to be a lot active, a lot more, a lot active. I'm really good at English, <laughs> more active on Instagram. I do stories, probably do a few more lives on Instagram. I've been really naughty. I know Emma, my friend Emma in the chat, you're gonna be doing a live soon, which is gonna be really exciting. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys can follow me over on there because you'll get to see behind the scenes a lot more and random stuff like, uh, what my Ben and Jer what my favorite Ben and Jerry's flavor is, because you know, <laughs> the more you know. So Swablu is the cotton bird Pokemon aptly named given, gosh, golly gee, look at their wings. They're like little cotton balls. They're so cute. And in fact, Alice, uh, I feel like this bird might be your spirit Pokemon. Yes, that's right. I said it. Uh, I think it is going to be your spirit Pokemon. You'll have to wait to find out why. Uh, but <laughs> it is a normal and flying type Pokemon first introduced in Generation 3. So it's been around for a while. In the game, speaking of candy, what Alice mentioned earlier, in the games, you need 400 candies to evolve it. But back in the gold, good old games, it evolves starting at level 35. So interesting you need 400 candies for it. I don't know why they did that. It might be interesting to look into that. But Swablu likes to live in flocks in the forest, but come springtime, they tend to come closer into town, which is interesting. A nice little hint there about their preferring to live in forest for their real life animal counterpart, which we'll be getting to after this introduction into Swablu. Now, the reason why, Miss Alice, I think this Pokemon could be like you, your spirit Pokemon, is because they like to clean. They are very clean birds. They'll, uh, the if Pokedex entries say quite a lot about their cleaning capabilities. They clean up things with their wings. They use their wings to clean off dirty surfaces to dust. And then of course, as their wings get dirty, uh, that's not good enough. They will use streams, bodies of water, fresh bodies of water to clean their wings, wash themselves, and then I guess continue cleaning, which is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, they do like Zoflora. I imagine they do. Uh, that would be a great, uh, you know, God, what was that TV show? I think it was like uh, SNL, Saturday Night Live, like how they'd have some like cheesy comedic sketch commercials. I think that would be so spot on for a Pokemon world kind of comedic video where it's like Swablu and Zaflora, they've partnered together to clean up uh, the Pokemon Center, something like that. And yeah, like how um, Corviknight, you know, is the taxi Pokemon in Galar, like Corviknight taxis, and then next would be Swablu and Zoflora. Yep, that's where my mind goes. Woo, distraction. Oh, that's a good one. And it's only Tuesday, guys. <laughs> I don't know why I do these live streams on Tuesdays, because by Tuesdays, I'm like, yep, <laughs> bring on the weekend, but it's all good. It's all good. I'm so glad you guys are here to laugh at me. I was going to say laugh with me, but I can't hear you on the other side. So I'm only assuming you're laughing at me. Hopefully you're laughing with me. But uh, yeah, so Zo uh, Zoflora. So Swablu really like to clean. Now, another interesting kind of top insider uh, spoiler warning for what I'll be discussing at the end of the video uh, <laughs> that I try to pitch quite cryptically to you friends is that apparently Swablu like to sit on people's heads. Now this one was a bit odd, uh, especially when the entry then finished up by saying uh, they're not really kind of afraid of humans. And when they sit on people's heads, like how their cute little bodies are, they tend to look like cats. And so yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge for the interesting uh, connection that we'll have to share later on. Uh, but I do want to mention, actually, the clouds. So obviously, they look like cotton buds. And we've talked about how they like to clean, maybe with Soflora, maybe not, maybe with Windex, who knows. But uh, 
they also have a great camouflage adaption adapt <sighs> a great camouflage <laughs> adaptation there we are third try adaptation to blend in with the clouds which it helps them avoid predators supposedly so it and it says in Pokemon Shield that apparently its wings turn white over many generations. I makes me wonder, like, did their wings start out as blue? Hmm, what color were their wings to begin with? But yes, they certainly look like cotton clouds. And ah, hello, Matty, a Swablu hat type. <laughs> yes, could you imagine Swablu on your head? I, I mean, they'd be cleaning you as well and would look quite fashionable indeed. Um, I don't know, what, uh, would you wear Swablu as a hat? Obviously a live Swablu, uh, you know, to be able to chill. I mean, I really enjoy like their little feet. I love that you can see their little feet. Although it is quite strange not seeing their neck. Like, I don't know if you guys are a bit like disconcerned by that. I mean, they are adorable, but yeah, not being able to see the animal's neck, it's kind of like, ooh, what's going on there? But it is rather cute. Anyways, so. That is a little bit brief introduction into Swablu. We've covered some top tips for Swablu Community Day. My two top tips are evolve a Pidgeot to be able to get that extra candy. And of course, using pineapple berries to be able to get even more candies. Because as we mentioned, you need 400 candies in Pokemon Go to evolve Swablu into Altaria and get it ready for Mega Altaria. You got to catch quite a few and get the mega candies as well to be able to then evolve one of yours into Mega Altaria. But they are crazy looking Pokemon. And it's very exciting, as always, to get another Mega Evolution. And Maddie, I have to ask, have you, Maddie's ahead of the game because he's down under with Australia, our friend Choppa in Australia as well. Now, uh, have you got a Ponita, a shiny Ponita already? It was released today. I've been desperately trying to get one. I mentioned Pancham has been released today in the Strange Eggs. Tell me, Maddie, have you got either of those friends? Because I want to know, because you, you, you seem to be ahead of the game with everything. Mr. Maddie, and I need to know because, yeah, I want to know that there's a chance that I could get a shiny Galarian Ponita because they're so cute. They're uh, green in color. Uh, Ponita, the Galarian form, if you don't know, it looks like a My Little Pony, but very mystical and magical. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. So, that being said, friends, we are now going to go into the real life animal counterpart of Swablu, which is so exciting because it's an incredible, beautiful bird. I will uh, pull it up for you guys now with my fancy new tech, she says, hopefully. Nope. There it is. <laughs> Look at my fancy new tech. Shout out to my dad <laughs> and uh, mom for getting me a nice new monitor to be able to do this on the live streams. Thanks, guys. Uh, so yeah, because I thought might as well be able to show you the amazing birds or animals that we talk about. And tonight it is about the bird of paradise. So you might be like, what is this guy doing? He is displaying for his female friends. And oh, no shiny ponitas for me. I have a few pandas, but a lot of got a shiny ponita. Oh, that's good to know. The hope is out there. And the day is still young, Maddie. The day is still young. Shiny ponita was just released today, or I don't know if it's yesterday, your time. Good old time change. Uh, so that's good to know. And fingers crossed for you and all of our friends uh, down under for shiny ponita. And good. Good to hear you got a lot of panchams. I'd be curious, uh, yeah, if we get ever get a pancham with red sunglasses, because it makes me think of the anime. Hopefully. Just like I want Ash's Greninja. Oh, that'd be so cool for a mega evolution. I don't think it will happen, but I can hope. So this is the bird of paradise, in particular, the blue bird of paradise. There are actually 39 different species of birds of paradise. And some of you might be thinking, birds of paradise, that's a plant, but it's also a bird. So <laughs> very excited. We're gonna obviously be talking about the birds in terms of birds of paradise. Boy, that's not gonna get confusing. Oh my gosh, Sean's here. Hi, Sean, for whatever the weather animals. Oh my gosh, speaking of, oh, I don't have any up here. Oh wait, I do. Um, Sean has fantastic stickers. And so one of the things for the Maui merchandise that I mentioned earlier, I am highly considering. Oh wait, you guys can't see the big screen. I'll go back to this. Please hold. 
I'm highly considering this. It, Sean sent me some of her stickers of her gig of getting Maui in that kind of form. So let me know what you guys think. I think it's rather adorable. Maui will be in a safari hat because why not? And uh, yeah, so thank you, Sean, for sending <laughs> sending me those cute stickers. They're so adorable. So now let us go back to our friend, the bird of paradise. Ah, oh, literally just thinking the plant. Yes, Grace, it is that indeed. Now... Birds of Paradise, I mentioned 39 different species. They are found in New Guinea, Australia, and the nearby islands. They are beautiful birds. They're, they're, the diversity amongst them is incredible. Um, it makes me think of my Eevee video, which I talk about Darwin's finches. And I know, controversial, hot take, comparing Eevee to <laughs> some of Darwin's finches. But there is good reason because of the different evolution patterns that Eevee takes and with Darwin's finches that we see in the real world. One might argue the birds of paradise do something similar because the variety within 39 different species is incredible. But I thought, swab blue, bird of paradise, I'm gonna go with the blue bird of paradise, which is the one you see currently on your screen. Now, the, the transformation, I think, that you see within the birds of paradise and the blue bird of paradise uh, in particular, it, it makes me think of Mega Altaria because that transformation into, you know, this big, powerful Pokemon that's really like poofy. Um, <laughs> there will be a picture later on where it, it, it's just a transformate, like birds, like what, what kind of bird is it? This is crazy, man, this is crazy. Uh, they do have necks, but I guess in some positions, Grace, they might not look like they have necks because I'm sure you've seen, you know, the good old, uh, you know, Planet Earth series, they showcase a variety of different birds of paradise where they do those weird contortions and the dances and whatnot. It is fantastic. In fact, in the links down below, I will put a fantastic resource to be able to watch um, two scientists, well, one scientist and one National Geographic photographer. They spent eight years out in Papua New Guinea in these places finding all 39 species of birds of paradise and recording and filming and studying it. And it is stunning, stunning. Two, two syllables there really emphasize how incredible it is to see the colors in these birds. Now, a bit of backstory about our friend, the blue bird of paradise, Paradisia Rudolfi. Ooh, I love speaking Latin. It makes me sound most posh, don't you think? Um, Paradisia is the Latin for bird of paradise. And then Rudolfi is after Archduke Rudolf, the crown prince of Austria and Hungary, back in the years 1857 to 1889. Love a bit of history. Uh, I think that'd be really cool to have an animal named after you. I know our friend, uh, Sir David, <laughs> our friend, I say it as if I'm friends with them. Our friend, Sir David Attenborough, you know, he has quite a few friends named after him. For my friends watching, I really would love to know if you, if an animal species could be named after you, you know, the scientific name or maybe, you know, the uh, English name as well, what animal would you want to be named after you? Let me know. This, I feel like this is one of the deep questions that will really connect us together as a community is what animal <laughs> would you want to be named after you? Hello, Rita. Where have you been? You're a little late to the party there, buddy. Um, but you made it just in time, Rita, to tell me what animal you would want to have named after you. I, I'm really curious to see, as I know a lot of you, <laughs> what you guys say. So specifically going back to the blue bird of paradise, they are found in Papua New Guinea. Now, they are sexually dimorphic, like a lot of these bird species, because it is all about impressing the ladies. So in fact, let's go take another look at this birdie here. There we go. So we can see him now standing the right way up. Uh, I was getting dizzy looking at the little little guy. Oh, you've been here. Oh, you've just been quiet. Sorry, Rita. Hello. Um, <laughs> so here we are seeing the blue bird of paradise. Um, I, I should say briefly, sexually dimorphic is where the males and females are, they, they are different. Like I think peacocks come to mind. A lot of bird species actually sh demonstrate sexual dimorphism because it's about impressing the ladies. Obviously, I think in my Machamp video, I talked about kind of sexual dimorphism and some of the things about competing. So I think of, uh, you know, various different animals. Uh, deer come to mind, you know, males with the antlers. Some female species don't. 
they they use them to fight over the ladies or impress the ladies. This one is all about impressing the ladies. The show, the show must go on. Uh, the males have the flank plumes that you see ever so beautifully dangling off uh, behind him and the central tail feathers. And these are the things that look like the little ribbons, which again is another reason why I thought Swablu, AKA then becomes Altaria and Mega Altaria because they have the plumage behind them. Obviously they're really puffy, fluffy with their wings, but they have the beautiful kind of ribbon tail feathers and head feathers as well. So that's definitely one of the reasons why I thought they reminded me of the birds of paradise. So <laughs> blobfish, you would be the blobfish. Oh my goodness, you guys are silly. Uh, if you're wondering why they're saying blobfish, uh, I asked earlier on about the bird or the bird, the animal that they would want to have named after them. And uh, yeah, blobfish, go on. Why, why would it be blobfish, Grace? You're very silly. Now the blue bird of paradise, they eat mostly fruit, which sounds like a wonderful diet, especially if I'm in a region such as Papua New Guinea. Oh, I can imagine the fruit must taste amazing. Makes me think of the pineapple that I had in Hawaii. There's, oh, there's something about that where it's like, it's almost ruined pineapple for me in different parts of the world. The other day, actually, I was in the shop and I was craving pineapple and it was my local Sainsbury's in case you were wondering. And I really wanted some pineapple. And I actually went and I was one of those people, you know, my hands were sanitized and I was trying my best to inspect the pineapple from outside the container <laughs> and trying to judge, ooh, okay, does that one look good? Or ooh, that one looks a little bit better because I take my pineapple very seriously, as I should. And so, uh, yeah, so I could only imagine how delicious their diet must be of mostly fruit. However, I should add that they do have some insects too sprinkled into their diet. Now, let's go back to the feathers, friends, because it's, just so striking the birds of paradise as a whole but then specifically this blue bird of paradise which we're focusing on as a real life kind of animal comparison to swablu now looking at the picture you can see okay i can see why they're named the blue bird of paradise they got those beautiful striking blue feathers those uh fluffy tail flank feathers are a bit more orange in color kind of brownie in color now these are pretty much display feathers. They're, they're fantastic coloration and they are a highly evolved version of the basic kind of feather that we see in a lot of birds. Now we see the fluff with these guys in the male blue bird of paradise because the females are a lot less pretty. I should have put a picture on, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just so excited to be able to show you guys pictures now in the live stream. I just couldn't contain myself with just adding pictures of the male bl blue birds of paradise, I suppose. Now. They also, other birds of paradise have more, I, I almost want to say like plasticky bits to their tail feathers. Like they look very, yeah, stiff. I guess that's the best word. Like stiff wires to their tails. But these are all feathers, which is insane. So the, uh, the evolution that you can see in the birds of paradise is just mind boggling. The colors, the feather types, the fluff, the wiry bits, the weird plasticky, stiff looking bits. It's insane. And so if you don't know much about Birds of Paradise, again, I'll pop the link to a really fantastic resource to look into just the diversity within these amazing group of birds. So these specialized feathers in the Blue Bird of Paradise in particular, like with the wiry bits, the ribbony bits, the fluffy tail flank feathers, made me think of the specialized feathers of our friend Swablu. As we saw, they like to clean. They are able to blend into the clouds of the sky to avoid predators, but more importantly, like the cleaning side of things. So <laughs> if I throw a pineapple at it, will it let me catch it? I don't know. I don't know. But why would you throw a pineapple? Eat the pineapple. Um, so while the specialized feathers for Swablu are like for the cleaning, you know, for hiding from predators, these feathers, as I mentioned, are specialized just to attract the ladies. They're not really for anything else other than to woo the lady bluebirds of paradise, which is uh, quite sweet, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I enjoy looking at them and doing the cool dance like we saw them hanging upside down to try to say, hey, come on over. I think it's just so fantastic to see some of the dances and the noises that they must make. That would be so cool to trek through the jungles and, you know, just listen to the birds. I think like even here in the UK, going out into the woods and hearing all the different birds. I mean, I'm not terribly good at identifying bird song, but it's still really fun to hear. In fact, the other day we were out on a walk 
and my husband heard some Swifts, which was really exciting because they've made their way over. So yeah, that's one thing I'm working on is trying to identify bird song. But yeah, being in a jungle <laughs> in Papua New Guinea, like how crazy would that be? Um, yeah, cleaning, woohoo! Yes, Alice, all for the cleaning. Yeah, the modica of, <laughs> of the bird world or of the Pokemon world would be Swablu indeed, I feel. Now, uh, not to take a sad turn or anything, because we are coming to the end of the live stream, my friends. I promised you a crazy, weird conspiracy history and pop culture connection between Swablu and the Bluebirds of Paradise. Uh, not to totally hype it up or anything, but it's because of these beautiful, striking blue feathers that uh, has partially led to the demise of our friends, the Bluebirds of Paradise. Uh, they are classified as vulnerable on the IUCN red list. And it's these feathers for which they are hunted, both for traditional use, but also for selling. And um, it's quite it, it's quite sad, obviously, uh, for many different reasons, because they are so rare and unique and, you know, endemic <laughs> to that part of the world and a very specialized bird that is just fantastic to study. But it is because of these beautiful feathers that they are hunted. Now, bear with me, friends. I'm actually going to take a drink of water because <laughs> this is going to get trippy. Uh, I will say I haven't actually watched this movie or the TV shows, but I could not help but share this crazy thing with you guys. Please hold. Let us go. Oh yeah, there's my Galtaria. So look how crazy that is. I mean, talk about transformation. <laughs> Birds of paradise do that as well. They can just be sitting on the branch like we saw earlier. And then all of a sudden, whoo, they flip upside down or they spread out their feathers and they take a completely different shape. So yeah, Mega Altaria coming uh, after Swablu Community Day this Saturday at 5 p.m. Mega Altaria will be released. And you can see even Mega Altaria has those beautiful kind of tail ribbon feathers that we see in uh, the Birds of Paradise, specifically the Blue Bird of Paradise. Now, friends, here we are. The Sex in the City movie, my link to pulp culture. So uh, we see in this picture, this is Carrie Bradshaw, um, Sarah Jessica Parker's character in Sex in the City. This bird was the blue for her wedding. Uh, many of you guys know, you know, in terms of kind of Western weddings, you got to wear something borrowed, something new, something blue. There's a rhyme to it. I'm sure I'm missing something. <laughs> but yeah, the something blue was the bird. And I was like, what? When I was looking up, you know, doing the research on the blue bird of paradise, this kept coming up. And I was like, what? How is the blue bird of paradise related to Sex and the City movie? How bizarre. Saw this picture. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Hmm. So I dug a little bit deeper. Now, it turns out that the bird used in this scene was a vintage plume, which I was like, oh, all right, what does that mean? Because as always, I have more questions. Now, plume, the, the plume, blue, uh, tongue twister, the plume boom, there we are, was in fashion from 1900 to 1910. This was the peak kind of decade of using plumage in fashion wear, if you will. And now it, it seemed to be mostly in Europe and then parts of America where it was kind of a fashion statement to wear literally, like Carrie Bradshaw is here, a bird as a fashion accessory, a dead bird, obviously. Uh, unlike Swablu, which we, which we see, and Maddie spoke about the Swablu hat type, which is why I was kind of like, ha ah, spoilers for the ending. You know, uh, obviously Swablu, when the trade, when it lands on people's head, it is living. But I wonder if that was a weird connection to this and the plume boom of the 1900s. Now, Plume boom didn't last very long because there was something called the Migratory Bird Act of 1918, in which uh, it pretty much called for action to help with, you know, migratory birds, exotic birds, uh, in the hopes to protect them in the future. Now, the interesting kind of oddity about this was that when this Migratory Bird Act of 1918 came into effect, 
a lot of these accessories, these hair accessories, even though they were so numerous because everybody wanted one. And unfortunately, obviously, a lot of birds died because of it. They were all burned. All the hair accessories were burned. So there's not that many left today. And <laughs> it, it's apparently a very, I can imagine, you know, taking a bird and, you know, the process of preserving it must be an intense process. And in fact, arsenic was used like in taxidermy by plumaciers to preserve the birds and their body parts, which coincidentally led to a lot of them being sick as well, sadly, uh, from like tuberculosis and things and other health issues because of the chemicals and the process that's involved in preserving the birds and their part. Um, but specifically, the weird kind of thing I found about this particular bird in an article that I'll put in the description down below because it was fascinating to read uh, this guy's interview with the modern day plumacier and what his process is and how he protects items like this one because as I said there's not a lot left how he preserves them now and then rents them out for scenes like this is that this bird, even though did catch the attention of many people. In fact, Sarah Jessica Parker was asked to question in an interview, what piece, what fashion accessory would you want to keep from the movies, from the TV show? And she said the bird. And a lot of people were like, whoa, that's striking because it is quite striking. I mean, it is very sad, but it is a whew, pop of color. It's not actually a blue bird of paradise, even though many people thought it was. Upon closer inspection, the plumaceer considered actually comparing it side by side by a few other artifacts that I have uh, of the greater bird of paradise. It seems to be a greater bird of paradise that's dyed blue. And it, it, again, <laughs> I, I was just like, what? It just got way down the rabbit hole. And I had to bring you guys down the rabbit hole with me because as you know, I love animals, love pop culture and love history. And I was like, what? This is crazy. Because I had no idea looking into the plumaceer side. And in, in fact, it makes me think, I know, Emma, you do a lot of costuming work. Like I'd be wondering if you've ever come across anything like this in your costuming career, because you've done a lot of amazing things. Um, but yeah, I, I was just super like, whoa, what's going on? So that's a whole other topic, I think, for discussion. You know, obviously, upon hindsight, looking back, it is upsetting to see, you know, the birds were used for purposes like this. And you know, a lot of them are threatened in one way or another, obviously still like the bluebird of paradise is hunted today for their beautiful feathers. So it, it does, it does seem crazy. So here's actually a picture of the bird that she was wearing. And this is the plumaceer. He's kind of wrapping it up to preserve it. And I guess from one standpoint, uh, you know, take a controversial take, I'm really excited that uh, he's been able to preserve this one. So then hopefully we can share like, hey, this used to happen. We stopped it. You know, why is it important? Because I think on one side, probably a lot of people who maybe watched Sex in the City, they probably didn't know of the bird of paradise. And I would like to think maybe it's my eternal optimism that maybe this helped them raise awareness of like, hey, like, what is that bird? And oh, it's a bird of paradise. And oh, they're vulnerable. Oh, gosh. I, I'd like to think that, but who knows? But yeah, that is the bird of paradise, the blue bird of paradise, the animal friends that I think is very similar to our friend, Swablu. Oh, what a crazy, crazy live stream, friends. My goodness, we had Maui join us. We covered Swablu Community Day, what to expect. A little bit about Swablu, the cleaning Pokemon, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. And then, of course, focused in on the blue bird of paradise, a fantastic, colorful bird that has some bizarre but impressive feathers and its weird connection to some pulp culture and history and plumage and all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, hi, Roland. It's nice to see you. Ah, uh, yes, a hybrid peacock. It certainly is something. That is for sure. It is absolutely stunning. I mean, Swablu, it, it doesn't have a neck. It's so funny looking. But yeah, I think it's most like the blue bird of paradise, given the color, obviously, but also the beautiful tail feathers, the very unique federation, and just how it transforms into maybe its mega form when it's trying to impress the ladies. <laughs> oh, mega evolution. What a joy. 
Well, friends, I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me again on this fine evening. I would like to pose a question to you all, if I may. Uh, in two weeks' time, I'm looking to do a very different live stream, and I'd be keen to hear your opinions. Uh, I like to post questions over on my Instagram um, about maybe what you guys like to see, what you want to see next, as uh, my friend Emma has been, and many of my other friends have been suggesting a podcast in the future. So I asked some questions of you guys about what kind of podcast you would like to listen to, which was fantastic. So I appreciate you guys answering that. But in two weeks time, it is actually uh, a week of my birth. And uh, I'd like to celebrate that as my one year of Shelby on Safari. And I'd be keen to see if you guys would want to join. It'd be very different from what I've done in the past, where I usually do an animal and compare it to um, a pop culture or vice versa. I talk about an animal and pop culture, like Pokemon, like Animal Crossing, and then tell you about the real life animal equivalent. But in two weeks time, I'd like to do kind of a year in review with you guys of maybe go over some of the really cool animals that we got to meet and talk about maybe some of my favorite videos and some behind the scenes kind of stories, I guess. I don't know. Would that be of interest to you, friends? And I'd like it to be kind of a Q&A as well, just to kind of celebrate. And if you had any questions, you know, I'm joined uh, by my friend over here, Utah. And then Maui, of course, will probably pop in because he loves to pop in. So Yes, do let me know. Whoa, 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 Katie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a few weeks before my birthday, but thank you. Um, but yes, so would that be of interest? Would you want to show up? I don't know how I'd advertise it, a year in review. Who knows? Uh, but I'll figure it out <laughs> as I go, if you guys are keen. Uh, but I want to say thanks again for hanging out as we discuss Swablu Community Day, the incredible Swablu cleaning Pokemon. I certainly would like one of those friends to help me dust around the house. Oh, it makes me think of the stairs and the stairway in my old house. Well, even here, those the really high corners that you can't reach. And there's always like a dust bunny and a dust cluster and spider webs and cobwebs up there. And you can't quite reach them, even with those really cool nifty tools that you get like at the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Poundland, where that can extend and you can try, like, try to reach. I still can't reach some of those corners. So I think a Swablu as a friend would be very helpful. And like Maddie said, a Swablu hat would be nice in the weather, the windy weather that we've been having, but a real life Swablu real Swablu uh, hanging out and then, yeah, helping me out. I think that would be cool. Oh, let's discuss Tammy the cat. <laughs> I'm sure Tamatoa would love to show up. Where is Pete? He's probably downstairs because nine o'clock is their dinner time. And so it's getting close to nine and they like to congregate and uh, remind me about 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes before nine o'clock that it's dinner time. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're hanging out saying, hey, dinner time. Uh, you would like a Dollar Tree of your own? Oh my gosh, you guys would love Dollar Tree for, well, it is very similar to Poundland here in the UK. Um, but I would say I, if my lawyer, if I had to choose my loyalties, I think I'd go for Dollar Tree. Now there's very, very much a specific reason as to why I would go for Dollar Tree. And this shouldn't surprise you friends that it comes down to food because there is one beautiful item sold at Dollar Tree, where at Disneyland, you would get it, but you'd have to pay like five times the amount you would at Dollar Tree, is the frozen Minute Maid lemonade carton things of pure joy. So Minute Maid lemonade is a fantastic tasting lemonade for my friends here in the UK. It's actual like lemon juice. It's not a uh, lemonade here where it's like Sprite, it's proper like lemon juice, water, sugar, and that. But they do cherry limeade, they do strawberry lemonade. My American friends, please, in the comments, help me out, assure my friends here in the UK that I'm not alone in saying what Minute Maid lemonade is. Yeah, sadly, I do not like lemon juice. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're not fan. But you, I, I think you would like the strawberry lemonade version or the cherry limeade. It is fantastic. But yes, at Dollar Tree, they have them there. Typically, you got to be quick, though, especially in the summertime in the States, in California, when it's hot, obviously, they go quick because they are the substantial portion for a dollar. Whereas, yeah, places like Disneyland, they charge you a bucket load of money. But at Disneyland, I wouldn't really go for a Minute Maid lemonade unless I was desperate. Um, I'm more of a pineapple whip girl myself, as we know, I love pineapple or the beignets. Oh, that was one thing I regretted when I got to go back to Disneyland in 2019, 
left when I visited home and the family there, we went to Disneyland and the queue for the beignets was so long and I had time was of the essence because I only had the one day um, or so I thought at first until my friend Tyler, if Tyler, if you're watching, he very kindly <laughs> let Jenna and I pop in the next day after. But uh, yeah, the beignets, oh my gosh, so good. So good. I highly recommend if you ever go to Disneyland, get the beignets. You will not regret it. And uh, you'll only regret only buying one batch. Ooh. So a who now? A beignet? Really? Oh, how do you describe a beignet? Well, it's like a donut, but covered in powdered sugar. Now, when I say donut, I um, I know you like Krispy Kremes, but it's better than Krispy Kremes. And it's fluffy and it's warm. They are served warm. They're freshly baked. Literally get them out and they're in like a paper bag with powdered sugar. And so you shake them up and oh, you it's very messy. It's not, a, it's not a food that you eat with fork and knife. It's very messy, but it's very delicious. It, it's not round. I'd say it's more kind of square and shape-ish. No, it, it, maybe it is round. Ish. Yeah, it, it doesn't have a circle in between. It's like a malasada, which is also like a donut. But it doesn't have the, it's not a circle shaped with a hole in the middle. No, no, no. It is a solid lump of fun. Yes. Sounds like churros. Um, no. 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 Very different. But very good. I like how this discussion has turned for food. It's made me want more stuff. In fact, I had scones for uh, dessert tonight. Now, scones, I prefer with butter and then the jam, or if I'm having cream, I put cream and then jam. I know this is controversial, but it's worth it. And Grace, I know you're hopefully trying to make your way over here. I'd be keen to see which way you decide to go for. I know Emma being here in the UK, I don't know which way she goes. I don't know if she puts cream and then jam. I'm hoping so. This is gonna be awkward. Um, think donut mixed with chocolate croissant. Oh, that's a good way of putting it, yes, yes. Solid lump of fun. <laughs> One solid dude. Well, good gracious. I feel like we could talk desserts forever. Maybe that's what we'll talk in, in two weeks time. Best desserts. Uh, yeah. To fuel your safaris out in the wild, watching animals or catching Pokemon. Yeah. What desserts keep you going? Keep you on the sugar rush? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Very good. Well, friends, thank you so much again for joining me. I really appreciate it. And yes, keep your ears out for a possible podcast happening in the near future. And that would be very exciting because the my drift spoilers for it is interviewing some pretty darn tootin amazing friends of mine and introducing you not only to them, but discussing animals, discussing their favorite things in pulp culture, and of course, discussing travel and adventure and going out in the great outdoors. And so, yeah, I can't wait for you to meet some of the amazing people I have lined up to interview, which is going to be fantastic, fantastic. Can't wait to pick their brains. I do it always anyways, but uh, yeah, for you guys actually to be able to hear the interview as well. So my amigos, you can find me over on Instagram, as I mentioned, at Shelby on Safari. You can find me on Twitter, which I don't ever use, so don't bother. You can also find me on Clubhouse, at Shelby on Safari. And of course, here on YouTube, at Shelby on Safari, which is where you're watching this, probably. So if you haven't already, be sure to click to subscribe so you can join the Safari, keep up to date with other live streams other videos. My videos come out on Fridays. This week is all about our friends, the amazing, the incredible donkey. Woo, I'm so excited to tell you five unusual things about these amazing animals this week. And yeah, look forward to lots more pop culture animal comparisons in the future and taking you guys out with me like I did uh, a few weeks ago. I went to the Hawk Conservancy Trust and I brought you guys with me along as we looked at some beautiful vultures, beautiful birds of prey, and be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. It was very different style from which I've done before. It was more vlog style. In fact, I gave you a top tip for making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So have we a live stream of all the different types of pastry in the UK and US? Yes. And that would be amazing because then I'd be the one to have both here and I would do a taste test. Yes, Rita. Yes. I love that. Except I'd have to bake them. Although I wouldn't, uh, the better half is a better 
baker than I am. So yes, I think he could bake the UK ones. I'd bake the US ones and then we'd give it a try. Although I haven't really made beignets. I don't know if I could pull it off. I did make malasadas during lockdown last year because I was really sad because I missed Hawaii. Um, and so I made us a Hawaiian feast, including malasadas, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll make some malasadas. Oh, that's what I'll do for my birthday. I'll make malasadas. But then I feel bad because I'll have them here and I can't feed them to you guys because I can't like send them to the screen. That's a shame. Um, I'll find a way. I'll send them by pigeon. I'll send them by blue bird of paradise. <laughs> Little birds of paradise will be flying with malasadas delivered to your door. Oh, the imagination, the things inside my head. Friends, this has been the longest outro ever. I'm easily distracted by you guys. <laughs> it is time. Alas, my friends, that's for you, Grace. We are signing off. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you all in two weeks time for when we discuss pastries here in the UK and US, uh, amongst many other things. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, uh, yeah, see you around either on Clubhouse, on Instagram, or here on YouTube. All righty, guys. Have a good night. Bye. If I can press end.